Hey guys, in today's video I'll be showing you a simple GPU overclocking guide for NVIDIA. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe as I will be posting more videos like this. But yeah. Now before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that there are many more ways to overclock your GPU, more advanced ways. I'm showing you a very simple and easy way to do it. Another thing is that we all have different GPUs, we're all going to end up with different numbers. Don't just copy the same exact thing what I do or the same exact numbers that I have even if you have the same GPU because it's all different. In this video I'm trying to get you guys to learn the gist of overclocking your GPU so you could do this yourself no matter what GPU you have as long as it's NVIDIA. If anything bad happens to your GPU, by the way I'm not responsible, just follow this video you'll be perfectly fine. Just don't do any dumb stuff or things outside of what this video tells you to do and you should be fine. Alright, so these are the tools that we'll be using in today's video. MSI Afterburner, Superposition Benchmark, 3 d Mark Demo for Time Spy, Hardware Info to check temperatures on the OCCT. You can get these by joining my Discord server, which will be linked in the description below. And you can head over to the overclocking channel in the pinned messages, where the program channel should have some as well. But yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open MSI Afterburner as administrator and set this up so we get a baseline. The only things we're going to do here is just put this to max, put our power limits and temp limits to max as well. You can tick this thing on off. And for fan speed, I really don't recommend auto fan speeds because if you go on hardware info, and make sure you check like sensors only, and scroll all the way down. Sometimes if you have like a really good cooled system, your GPU fans will just turn off completely like this and cause high temperatures. So I really recommend taking this off of auto and setting it to a higher speed. Just know this will make your PC louder though, so don't panic if anything. And then you can just save this to a profile and click this Windows thing just to make sure it's saved. And once you do that, you could exit out of it and you could open superposition right here. Run as administrator. Before we actually run the benchmark, we'll just create a little folder here called GPU Overclock. And in here, for the benchmark, you want to run performance right here and the preset to the highest preset you can go. For me, it's 8K optimized. I know on a 1050, it might be 1080p extreme. Just try to go the highest one you can and make sure you're on direct X. You're going to want to run this and just get a baseline, like screenshot your score. I'm going to start to get optimized right here. You're going to want to run this and screenshot your score. This will just give you a baseline so you can see the performance impact a GPU overclock would have and to just keep track of things. So I'm going to run one right now. Okay, so I'm back. I've got my results from the stock settings, so no overclock yet. I'm taking a screenshot of them and I put them in the AK Optimize folder right here. One thing I forgot to mention, by the way, is to not move your mouse while you're doing the benchmark because it will like cause some inconsistencies especially if you have like a high hertz mouse or whatever it's just good to make sure you don't move your mouse while you're doing it the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create another folder i'm going to name it time spy because we're going to run another benchmark it's always good to run multiple because they all work differently and you might be unstable in one while you might be stable in the next one so it's good to run multiple just to make sure you're completely stable so we're just going to use this benchmark as well, just to get a stock. So we can get a before and after. Okay, so I just loaded up 3 Mark. It takes a little while to load up. I'm going to close Steam right here, and I'm going to run the Time Spy benchmark, and I'll be back when it finishes. Okay, now that I've got my Time Spy baseline right here, and I have it screenshotted, what I'm going to do is actually start overclocking my GPU. To do this, we're going to run MSI Afterburner as administrator and we're gonna start messing with the core clock first now usually on nvidia gpus if they haven't degraded they usually sit at like around 175 to 200 i already overclocked this gpu so i know my limits but i'm going to be overclocking this gpu in the same process that you guys would so core clock i mean we could start at plus 50 because usually all gpus could do this we're going to save it we can save it to a profile right here. We're going to make sure this Windows thing is checked on. We're going to exit out of this and restart. And then we're going to run our superposition benchmark right here. Get our score and make sure that's stable. 
We're gonna also gonna be looking for like artifacts, stutters, or if our PC crashes to make sure that it's stable. If it does crash and you do get some artifacts or whatever, then it's not stable and you have to bump the core vault core clock down. But usually at plus fifty it isn't. But I'm gonna go back and run my benchmark right now and I'll come back. Okay, so I just finished my benchmark, the plus fifty on um where the world did I put it? Right here. Just move it. Yeah, the plus 50 on core clock, as you can see, I got better results compared to the baseline right here on these benchmarks. What I'm going to do now, since it was completely stable, I didn't see any artifacts or anything. I'm going to go to MSI Afterburner. And if this were you guys, I'd be bumping this up by plus 20 from now on. So instead of plus 70, plus, no, plus 50, I'll go to plus 70. If that's stable, then you should go to like plus 90 and then keep going up until you get something that's unstable. For the sake of this video not being so long, I'm gonna go all the way up to 200 because I already done this before. I'm gonna save it. Save it to this profile right here and I'm gonna benchmark and come back again. Okay, so I'm back. I just ran a plus 200 on the core clock. As you can see, it was better than my results before. So I know I'm going in the right direction. What I'm gonna do now is just bump this up to maybe like plus 20, so that'll be like 225. And I'm gonna run this benchmark again, see if I crash or anything. I know I'm getting near the limits of this GPU. So I'll be back and run this again. Okay, so I didn't even make it far in the benchmark before crashing, so I know that whatever I was running, I think it was 225. Yeah, it's unstable. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna drag this slider down by just one and try to get something that's stable. Hopefully this would work. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to chop this down again, but I'm gonna run this benchmark again and be back. So I ended up getting further in the, I think it's 214 core clock I was running. Yeah, but I ended up crashing still. So what I'm gonna do is lower this one time again to 202. And I'm gonna save this to my profile and run the supervision again and try to make sure that's 100% stable. So I'm done with my benchmark again on the plus 200 2, which would have been the same thing as 200 core by the way. And I literally got the same results, so I'm not going to screenshot again, but I know that 200 is stable now since anything higher was unstable and I crashed. And at 200, I didn't have any artifacts or any crashing. Just to make sure, I'm going to run a time spy benchmark right now, just to see if it's stable. If it was unstable, if you would have ran the time spy benchmark, but it was stable in the superposition benchmark, then you would drop the core clock again and test back in time spy to make sure you have something stable. But I'm going to run my time spy benchmark right now. It should be stable, and I'll be back. So, um, as you guys can see, the 202 core clock passed. I ended up getting better results if you compare the stock results over here i was at 11,000. now it's all the way up at 12,000. now i can confirm that the 202 core clock is 100 percent stable so what we're gonna do is start messing with our memory clock now for memory clock this really depends on the memory type that you have for me it's micron i know in 10 series if you have samsung then you could go higher on the memory clock than you would on other types of dies. Usually around 10 series, you would get around like 700 stable. On the newer cards, you could go all the way up to, to, to 1000. Um, for you guys, I would recommend starting at 500 and then running your benchmark and then going up by the hundreds to see if it's stable. So I'm going to start at 500 right here, save it to my profile, and I'm going to benchmark it. Be right back. So as you guys can see, the plus 500 on the mem clock came back stable. So I also got better results. So I'm going to start bumping it up again. For you guys, if you want to play it safe and stuff, you could just start bumping this up by the hundreds. So for you, it'll be like 600, and then you'll run your benchmark. And if that's stable, then it'll go up to 700 and so on until you get unstable. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to go extremely high up to 1200. And then I'm going to run my benchmark and come back. So I finished the 1200 memory clock benchmark. As you see, it came out with a more positive result. 
one thing I forgot to mention is that your highest memory clock, by the way, it isn't going to be 100% the best thing because what happens with NVIDIA GPUs is that when you go too high on the memory clock, you start spewing out errors. And the issue with this is that your GPU has different memory error corrections where it tries to fix those errors and you end up having a performance penalty. So if you get the gist of this by now, I'm going to go all the way up to 1300 and see if that's stable. But like I said with the memory correction error, say 1200 is my max, then that might not be the best. I'm going to have to lower it just to avoid those memory error corrections. But right now we're still pushing the memory clock, so I'm going to go to 1300. But I'm also going to run Time Spy instead, because one thing about 1300 is that your memory clock is basically like your VRAM. And if you look at superposition right here, the AK Optimize doesn't use up all of my GPU's VRAM effectively, so I'm going to run Time Spy, which does, and I'll come back with the results. Okay, so I'm back with the 1300 memory clock benchmark. I'm actually really surprised because if you come back and look at the 202 core clock, which is zero on the memory clock, you will see that it barely improved, literally only by six points. So this could be by the memory error correction thing that I was talking about. I'm going to go up to 1350 just to see if it'll go any higher or if it'll crash or not. But I'll be back with the results after that. We're most likely going to have to drop this though. I'm going to run time spy again. Okay, so I'm back. 1350 had ended up crashing, so I'm guessing around 1300 is where our limits are. Now the fact that on time spy when we had zero memory clock and then 1300 on the memory clock we only improved by six points i'm guessing that we're at the stage where we're getting the memory error corrections so what i'm going to do is drop from 1300 to 1200 because if we were to go up any higher then we'd start getting a performance penalty and i'm going to keep dropping this till we get better results so i'm going to save this to my profile and i'm going to benchmark again Okay, so I'm back from running the benchmark on 1200. As you can see, I got way better results. From 1300 memory clock right here, I was at 13.123, now I'm at 13.1237, and I'm up a whole 100 points on this. Another thing too is that, like I said, with the memory error corrections, if I go any higher, it might be worse, and if I go any lower, it might be better, vice versa as well. I don't know the, really the sweet spot for this. And if I were to find a sweet spot, which is something you guys can do, then you will get like really, really good results. It just takes a lot of time. I'm going to stop overclocking this because I'm contempt with the values I have right now because they're both stable. One thing I just want to mention before we end this video is that the memory clock, if you aren't sure about if it's 100% stable because as you can see, like I went all the way up to 1300 and I was fine until I went to 1350 and I wasn't sure until the errors that you could use OCCT right here, you could run as administrator and they should have a GPU VRAM benchmark and stress test that you can do, not benchmark, a stress test and this will tell you if you get any errors while doing it, you just have to go right here to VRAM, you can set this to 100% and then run this for how long and it'll tell you if you have any errors that's just a way you can stress test to make sure if it's completely stable if you do get errors then you can just drop the memory clock and you'll be fine until you just stop getting errors but that's just a simple way you can overclock your gpu both the query clock and memory clock hopefully by now you guys get the gist of overclocking your gpu it's really simple all of our numbers are different so we're all going to end up with different results, so don't feel bad if you couldn't go as high as I could go. Or if you do go higher, don't feel bad thinking that's like unstable or something, because you could just have a really good GPU. If you guys like this video, then make sure to like and subscribe, as I will be posting more videos like this. And yeah, see you in the next one.